Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. The WD-40 has proven itself to be a fish catcher over many years. Although originally intended to be a betis imitation, I have a feeling it loosely resembles a whole slew of things trout like to eat. Begin by picking up one of the size 14 long shanked hooks and getting it firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Then load a bobbin with a spool of olive uni thread. Get the thread started on the hook shank, leaving an eye length space behind the eye and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. Continue taking thread wraps to about the midpoint of the hook shank. Although wood duck is traditionally used on a WD-40, hence the WD, here we're going to use well-marked mallard flank feather. Strip away all the lower fuzzy short fibers from the stem until the remaining tips on the feather are fairly even. Measure to form a tail just slightly longer than a hook gap in length. Begin securing the feather to the top of the hook shank with wraps of tying thread. Continue taking thread wraps rearward, binding the mallard to the shank a little ways down into the hook bend. Then, reverse direction and make open spiral thread wraps forward to the initial tie-in point. Pull the butt end of the feather back to help you gauge distance and keep taking thread wraps until the feather is secured all the way up to one third of the way down the hook shank from the back edge of the eye. This will end up being the hind end of the wing case. Start making touching wraps rearward to roughly coat the abdomen of the fly with green thread. Then take forward wraps back up to the mallard. To add a little taper to the body of the fly, make touching thread wraps down the shank about one third of the way to the base of the tail, then back up to where you started. Next, go two thirds of the way to the tail with your tying thread and back up. Finally, go all the way down to the base of the tail with wraps of tying thread, then back up, smoothing out any lumps or bumps as you go. All this wrapping effort should result in a lightly tapered abdomen on the fly. Now, pull the mallard flank feather back and wedge some thread wraps in at its base to lightly hold it back. To build the thorax of the fly, pluck an ample clump of dubbing free from the packet. Pull down on your bobbin to expose approximately five inches of tying thread. Create a slender dubbing noodle on the thread that's about two inches in length. Pull the wing case back and start taking wraps with the noodle to build up a bulbous little thorax on the fly. End with your tying thread at the back edge of the hook eye. Now pull the mallard forward and taut over the eye and take nice tight thread wraps to secure it immediately behind the eye. Next, pull the feather back and take thread wraps under it, still just behind the hook eye. Follow this with a few more wraps over top of the feather. You can then lift the butt end of the feather up and snip it off close, being careful not to cut your tying thread in the process. Cover any exposed butt ends with wraps of tying thread and create a neat little head on the fly. Reach for your whip finish tool and use it to do a four or five turn whip finish, seat the knot well, and snip your tying thread free. And there you have it, a WD-40 with a nicely marked tail and wing case, a slender tapered body, and a fuzzy, bulbous little thorax. Just right for fooling wary trout. <laughs>